What's up, everybody? It's your favorite wheelies, favorite weapons, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Zeta Toys slingshot of their Legend Scale Superion Aerial Bot set. Once again, this is on loan to me from Caleb. We have the Silver Bolt as well. My goal is to get all of this stuff done this week. That's my goal. We shall see how successful it is, but nothing's going to get us there if we keep procrastinating and getting started. So let's go ahead and get started, but in order to do so, we'll start with accessories. So almost identically, he comes with the double barrel weapon as well and as a Fireflight. It's not the same, but it's very similar. And uh, once again, sculpt work, no paint. Once again, it will peg into the bottom of the wings. This time it, uh, it does not have a little thing to prevent it from moving, but it's right up against the body of the jet. So at least you don't have to worry about it that way. And he holds those just fine. So let's look at the jet, and I think it's pretty solid. Once again, we got like that. I like how they did the landing gear here. I mean, obviously they don't work, but they sculpted them in. We have some white paint down here on the bottom. We have some red. We'll talk a little bit more about that in robot mode. But we have the red and blue paint down the wings. Once again, has a little bit of the issue dealing with some of the line work detailing that's sculpted in, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Silver accents. We have a canopy that I'm guessing works. Mm mm. So it does, and I don't think I broke it. I think it just comes in two pieces. There's this piece, and then there's this piece. This piece is on a double hinge to get to work, to go up and over for the, so uh, I, I wouldn't mess with it too tough. The good news is it does slide back on there nicely. I hope I didn't break it. <laughs> what a year. But it's, uh, I don't think I did. It doesn't feel or look necessarily like a break. Um, there's like a little bit of a chip, but there's also a chip in the side here. I don't know. And then we have blue paint on the tail fin there. Uh, so, you know, all in all, pretty solid. There it is next to Tiger Tracks. So pretty much right on brand with the rest of them. All right, so let's get them transformed. Rotate the wings. This is a, a clearance thing, mainly. You can get this out of the way. You can also do this. And I don't think it really matters what order you do a lot of this stuff in. So let's go ahead and try it. We'll spin the head down. This head sculpt's much better than the previous. Uh, get the extension flap up, fold that in, tab it in, you're good to go. And then start extending the legs. Once again, they're on that dual system, so slide one down, and then we need to slide down this section. There we go. They're a little stubborn, and we're gonna uh, actually, let's see. There. So same on this side. It's a little tricky to like see exactly which part slides, but there it is. Foot down. Cool. We wings like this maybe. Like that. Fold that down. There you go. Whew. All right. Then upper body is the same as the previous. Uh, I keep saying the same because I just did the other one. But pull, open the chest, pull the arms out. They do extend at the forearm to bicep. Same on this side. Line up this chest cavity the best you can. And then get this piece to come down and sort of capture it all. It gets a little tricky because you got to make sure that it's lined up on both sides of the chest at the same time, uh, which is just a little tricky. All right, uh, flip the hands out if they haven't flipped out already. Head up. And we're going to open up this stuff here on the back. There we go and this comes down and then up and tucks in i'll get them cleaned up we'll take a look at them all right so head sculpt infinitely better much more defined well done we have yellow paint or orange and the blue metallic and robert's texting me he must know. He's probably he's probably begging me to break something. Uh, we have a ball ball peg for the head. I did double check this. It's fine. Uh, you get all the way up, a little bit down, swivel, confused dog look. So just like the other one, I mean, it's a mold mate, right? 
The shoulders, once again, we get past 90 degrees up. You do sacrifice some sculpt for it. I think it's worth it. You get the swivel around. Single hinged elbow gets you 90 degrees. And right above that, you get your bicep swivel. For the chest, we have red paint. And this is a die cast piece too. This whole chest assembly piece is die cast just for what it's worth. Same for the other side. We have a waist swivel. We have hip skirts that'll get up and out of the way to get you that you get a little eight up on the backpack. We'll go ahead and back out of taste. Um, but you do get the full Van Dam. So no issues there. We get a thigh swivel also. Single hinge knee. Ankles tilt down, tilt up, and rock. It's not really an ankle. It's more of a toe articulation, but it cheats it and works all the same. And I think specifically for the scale, it should be forgiven. Um, and yeah, I, I, like I will say, well, I'll save it for the final thoughts. But like, um, you know, as you manipulate these guys a bit more, like this is like my second one in a row, you do start to see a couple little issues. But for the most part, I mean, these things are pretty well done, specifically for the size. Um, I dig them overall. We bring in the usual suspects for tradition with the old school Iron Factory scale blaster and the Hasbro Stunicon. And then just because I happen to have them both still out, there is the New Age Megatron and Optimus as well. So it gives you a little bit of an idea for scale. Final thoughts wise, the only negative I'm going to harp on since this is a mold made of the other one and pretty much share the same issues is, which are few to be fair, but which is there is a fiddliness to a lot of this stuff because a lot of stuff doesn't necessarily lock in place. Like for instance, as you manipulate the arms a lot, the hands have a tendency to tuck back inside of the forearms. The forearm has a tendency to tuck back inside of the elbow or vice versa rather. And like, it's just something you notice as you manipulate them a bit more than a little. If there was only something that could kind of be used as a stopper for some of these pieces so that they wouldn't constantly have to be fixed and altered while you were going about kind of posing the toy or whatever the case may be. But once again, plenty of articulation, great sculpt, tons of paint accents, if not pieces that are fully painted, die cast integration, pins over tension, decent materials, etc., etc. So it is ultimately another recommend for me, obviously. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.